Hey, I'm Smoonie Chatted, and this is the Kerbal Space Program 2 for Science Update, where you build rockets and gather science. But we're not going to be using rockets. We're going to try to beat the game using only aircraft, starting right now. When you start the game, it gives you this nice little uh, somewhat laggy slideshow telling you all about the Kerbal Space Program and your role as director. But you see, I don't care about this slideshow. I only care about planes, and I came here to conquer. So we immediately skip all of that and go directly into Mission Control where they give us this beautiful mission saying launching a rocket. Of course, we're not going to do that. We're going to start out by building something that may look very similar to a rocket, but trust me, it's not going to be. You may look at this and say, Smoonie, that is literally just a rocket. What the hell are you talking about? But I would look at you and say, no, 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 because they gave me the power of the extra small stabilizer, something that can be stretched into very not extra small sizes really easily for no extra cost to me uh, which is a pretty dumb decision on their part because I'm going to turn this immediately into a plane but as fate would have it on our first launch I broke the golden rule of Kerbal Space Program I did not check my staging seriously how did I forget that so I went back to the VEB and fixed the staging pretty embarrassingly and went for our second launch which was much more successful at the very beginning at least our goal here was to take off much like a rocket, but then tip over and do more of an SSTO style ascent to uh, 10,000 meters, at least. Uh, but I would like to get out of the atmosphere and get some uh, sweet, sweet science from space too, because I'm just going to try to be as grindy with the science in this run as I possibly can be. As we gain more and more speed, mind you, in our very first launch, uh, we begin to see some of the brand new re-entry heating effects, which I think look absolutely spectacular. Look at that. Uh, but with the re-entry heating effects comes re-entry heating. And I don't really think that I accounted for that. Because as you can see, we're already getting those uh, overheat bars. And then while we're in map mode, it blows up. So we go for a second launch and uh, we tip right over to uh, about 10 degrees. And we keep tipping over. And we keep tipping over. And then we panic and shoot the parachute. And it does nothing. So after some hefty insurance paperwork, we go for what I believe is our third launch. We adjusted the wings a little bit closer to the center of mass so that the swivel engine had an easier time uh, tipping our uh, aircraft up and down so we can adjust our uh, attitude a little bit better. And honestly, for a plane with absolutely no control surfaces right now, this is doing as well as I could have hoped. But unfortunately for Bill Kerman, who is piloting this contraption, it's about as safe as the BA-349 Natter. It is, nonetheless, performing rather well and getting us to our target altitude in a jiffy. And before we know it, we've blown right past 10,000 meters and we get those sweet sweet science points but there's a way that we can get even more if we're a little bit sneaky about it all we have to do is go into the escape menu and revert back to the mission control well not really revert our plane's still going we just can uh, check off this mission now and get those uh beautiful science points but once we check off this mission and get those science points we get the next mission out of the atmosphere and it just so happens that our plane hasn't actually made it out of the atmosphere yet, which means we get the signs for both missions at once. But unfortunately, on Bill Kerman's side of things, it isn't looking so good. It seems someone didn't make any plans whatsoever on how to actually re-enter this thing. So the wings rip off, one of the vertical stabilizers rip off, and then the entire thing goes engine first into the lower atmosphere over top of the North Pole. Uh, screaming through it over a thousand meter meters per second, the engine blows off and Bill Kerman is left piloting what is essentially a bullet. So I go into a panic, pressing every single button, trying to get the dang parachute to deploy, and it finally does, and then rips off. Bill Kerman perished in the crash. But now, of course, it's time to uh, cash in those uh, sweet science points and go on a bit of a shopping spree. So now that the infinite power of consumerism has filled the hole that Bill Kerman left in our hearts, we find out that the buoyancy test is quite possibly the easiest mission ever. And just like that, we're heading right back to the R&D center to buy more crap. And this time we picked up some actual airplane parts. So we quickly began production of our very first actual aircraft using a, an actual cockpit and the actual uh, jet engine. I went for kind of an early uh, jet design here. I didn't really... Uh, base it on anything specifically, but maybe something that Meg would have produced or something like that. Uh, just a basic kind of a barely swept wing with uh, some stabilators in the back. And uh, it's looking pretty good right now, as is. The cockpit's a little bit farther back, maybe a more ME262 uh, reminiscent than anything, and uh, I'm sure he has a very fun time landing that with the uh, view from the cockpit. Probably has to uh, open up the canopy and stick his head out the side. <laughs> 
But uh, we go for a, a nice red and white look, and we've got it out on the runway, and uh, we check the ailerons and the elevator and the rudder, and uh, everything's looking great. But those uh, stabilators uh, are a little bit touchy. They're very, very touchy. Um, the ailerons are about exactly where I'd want them at. As you probably can see, we stuck a uh, Science Junior there just on the bottom of the aircraft, which uh, kind of pulls it down, especially if you uh, time warp. It starts to pull it down more and more, and eventually, uh, in this run, it pulled it down a little bit too far. But luckily, this was all just the uh, simulator, and we go out for another test run of this, uh, I think, pretty fine-looking aircraft, and we're still going to use those stab stabilators. I just uh, turned down the sensitivity on them eventually. And uh, it's running pretty good. Pretty pretty good run here. Um, the uh, the pull-down uh, effect wasn't too awfully bad, and we decided to take this over to the island runway to hopefully grab a little bit of science from the runway there because uh, you can just press the science button over there and run whatever experiments you get. It's very efficient. I love that science button. So we're going to land it over here, and I decided to do a go-around because it was way too squirrely and that's saying something given uh, how squirrely my landings usually are so we go for a go around and uh, come back around to the runway and uh, it's still pretty squirrely the the main problem here is how much those stabilators move in the back uh, whenever you're actually trying to do these little tiny adjustments we turn on the thrusters or, uh, reversers to uh, try to slow this down a little bit brakes are on and yeah we just uh, just couldn't save this one but hey Val's still alive and uh, I think we still got some science out of it. And uh, Paige says that we had a successful landing. Yeah. So despite that successful landing, I'm going to rip off those uh, stabilators and replace them with a uh, wing part, which has the uh, smaller control surface on there. And we're also going to shift those wings a little bit more forward since the uh, wing parts actually provide a lot more lift. Uh, bind that uh, thrust reverser to a key and uh, sweep our wings a little bit more. You find adjustments. And uh, before you know it, this thing is looking even better than before and performing even better than before. So now that we have a really good working aircraft, we need to figure out how to uh, gather some science. So I decided to go up here in the north of the USK somewhere, maybe over in Kermalia. Just find a flat place to land there and uh, run our science experiment that we have duct taped to the bottom of the aircraft. And uh, we should get some uh, nice science out of that if uh, all goes well. Maybe also get Val out and uh, do some surface samples. But first things first, we need to actually find a proper landing area. So we're about 165 kilometers north of the KSC, deep in the heartland of the Caranian Pirates of Romalia. We've turned our thrust reverser on, and we're trying to aim for that little tiny clearing without trees. I know the trees don't have any collision, but I'd like to pretend that they do. So we come down, and this is only the second landing after that crash one, and I think I pretty much nailed it. We almost lost a little bit of control there, and we did tip back a little bit because we're on a tad bit of a hill, but we did finally get it under control and uh, Parker there. And then we got a little bit of science, not nearly as much as I would have hoped for, uh, but we uh, got Val out anyway and walked her right off the wing to get a nice surface sample. And Val is such a chad that she's able to put a flag in the ground and grab a surface sample at the exact same time. Now that is training at its finest right there. So we're going to let the landing gear down and have this thing kneel like a camel so we can try to get back in the cockpit. Despite my best efforts, we just never could get her in there, and so we uh, recovered both of them separately. And we got a fair bit of science, which we took back to the R&D Center for yet another shopping spree. And we made sure to pick up some decouplers, sepatrons, and even a fairing. So now our only goal is getting to orbit. But we're not going to quite build an SSTO yet, we're going to build something a little bit different. Now you probably could have told by the uh, design of this aircraft what we're kind of going for here. We're going to do a bit of a strato launcher type system, where we uh, take this plane up into the uh, as high as we can get it, basically, and as fast as we can get it, and then drop this rocket that's attached to the bottom. Now I would still say this is using aircraft, it's going way out of my way to use aircraft but I think this is absolutely sick. So we took it out for a few test runs and decided that the rocket on the bottom actually needed some uh, fins on there and some control, and we're taking it out for the final launch. Now this carrier aircraft actually had some very minimal testing, like I didn't really test this much, but it flew surprisingly well. But right off the bat, I noticed that we weren't gaining the speed that I was kind of expecting given that we had well over one thrust to weight with those Weasleys. So I used an SSDO tactic and leveled this out to try to gain more speed, and then I noticed the problem. Our number two middle engine somehow had its thrust reverser on. 
And once we turned it off, we gained that speed I was looking for. In fact, we gained beyond what I was looking for. We got this thing up to over 500 meters per second just on those Weasleys alone. So I decided to uh, get this as high as I possibly could, kind of checking the uh, apoapsis there, and uh, finally kind of did a bit of a zoom climb with it, which we lost a little bit of speed, but gained a fair bit of altitude getting this thing up to about like, a, what is it, like 11, 12,000 uh, uh, meters. And then we release our payload, hoping for the best because this is completely untested and getting itself to orbit. What a cool shot there of it disconnecting from the carrier aircraft, which we can say goodbye to and goodbye to Valentina because it deletes things in the atmosphere. I think the only reason I was even able to swap to it in the first place is the atmospheric vessel switch mod that I installed for the game because it's dumb that you can't switch between things in the atmosphere and it should be part of the game to begin with. Anyway, we start getting our re-entry effects there because we are really blazing through the upper atmosphere and pretty easily get it up out of the atmosphere. All that's left to do is coast our way to our apoapsis where we had a very successful circularization burn and got into orbit, revealing our nice little probe there. Now I had added a second stage to this probe uh, of cephatrons just clipped into the bottom of the little Staputnik there and uh, I didn't really know what to do with it. So I aimed toward the Mun, burned what little fuel we had left in the main rocket and then lit those cephatrons and oh my god this thing had a lot of delta V enough to throw it out of the yeah, Kerbin system. Quite a ways out of the Kerbin system. I mean, we could have went to Duna or almost Drez on this, so <laughs> it had a little bit of Delta V. That's all I've got for this episode, though. Uh, let me know if I should continue this series and try to beat the entire game using only aircraft from here out.